Acts 8, 14, and I'm going to read to verse 17. Pay attention. Now, when the apostles, now, after Philip preached, people believed the gospel. The whole city was shaking. Philip sent for the apostles to come and help him. When the apostles which are Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John. Next verse. Who, when they were come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet, he was falling upon none of them. I've explained this right. I've explained this right. He was falling upon none of them. Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. 17. Then let they their hands on them and they received the Holy Ghost. 18. When Simon saw, that's a word to underline, Simon saw, Simon saw, that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered them money. He sowed a seed to tap grace. <laughs> He sowed a seed to tap unction to function with gumption. <laughs> he sowed a seed to tap into the unction of the man of God. The guy's name is Simon Magus. Simon Magus. Simon Magus. That's the name of that guy, the sorcerer. In other words, that means there was something that was done by the people that Simon saw when hands were laid. That means he saw signs that something supernatural happened to the people when hands were laid. He saw something. So Simon saw and brought money. He brought what? History has it. That that Simon. Never believed the gospel. History has it. That that Simon never repented. So all through. He never came to the repentance. History has it. He sold a doctrine to the church. He sold a doctrine to the church that the Pentecostal charismatics are still struggling with. A transactionary gospel. He marketed a transactionary God. A God that never bless until you mobilize him. A God that will not move until you move him. A man of God will say, if your offering cannot move you, it cannot move God. That is, your offering must move you first before it can move God. Transactionary gospel. My God is not for sale. If you don't give, you can get. Your offering will wipe away your suffering. Your seed will meet any need. Should I go deeper? <laughs> if you don't pay your tight, it will be tight. Eh? Solomon gave a thousand bond offerings. And that night, God said, what do you want? So a seed to open the heavens. Fill up the clouds. Fill up the clouds. An offering to fill up the clouds. Because if the clouds be full. They empty themselves to the earth. So if there's nothing coming down. It is because nothing has gone from you. You know I used to be there. And I was a professor there. Don't try me. Don't try me because you will soon start dropping offering now. That doctrine was sold by Simon the sorcerer to the church. And it has spanned over the years until now. 
the churches are still struggling with that false doctrine that was given by Simon the sorcerer. You need a wife, sow a seed. You need children, sow a seed. Anything you need, a seed can meet every need. He said, for that which you sow it, is not what first come it. In first Corinthians. That's an abuse of that scripture anyway. God has given to every seed his own body. So if you sow a seed, God will determine the body to give it. Whatever you need will be the body that will come. There are pastors that are not happy with me right now. Mind how you are laughing. Because they may take it out of you. <laughs> A seed will meet every need. If your needs are still looking at your face, your seed is not weighty enough. It came from Simon the sorcerer. He brought a bag of money and said, look, I want the power. Take money and give me power. That is where that doctrine came from. A transact transactionary doctrine. It came from there. And it has become a global thing today. It's all over the world. All over the world. Even Christians are fighting if you tell them that you cannot give to God for God to give to you. They are angry because their mindset is a business mindset. Oh, I was there. I was there. And I know it well. I know it like I know black and white. There's nothing you will tell me about it. Nothing. So it's not because I don't know it that I'm envious of those who know it. I've been there. I've done that. I've seen it to the end. I've seen the made in China of the plate. <laughs> Is it made in China or Korea or Abamid? Which one? Or Taiwan? <laughs> Look at Peter's answer. That will surprise you. Why will Peter answer the way he answered? Verse 20 of Acts chapter 8. Why will Peter answer that guy like that? Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Look at the next verse. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with you. Because that was taught that the gift of God may be purchased with money. The Doron. The Doron, that's the gift. The word Doron means what is given without condition. What is given without condition. Simon Magus never repented. He is the one who perpetuated that doctrine. And Paul and Peter spoke about this tribe of preachers. What kind of preachers? This tribe of preachers who were collecting money for God's blessings. The Doron of God. The word purchased. You think that the power of God can be purchased with money. The word purchased in the Greek means exchange. Exchange. That's the word purchase. To give for something. Is absolute heresy. To think you will give something to God for God to give something to you. It's a fat lie. You can't purchase the gift of God because it came freely by the death of his son. The gift of God came freely by the death of his son. In verse 21, look at what, what, what Simon now said to that guy, to Magus. I mean, Peter said to Magus, Thou was neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Thou was neither part nor lot in this matter. The word matter is the Greek word logos. There was no part in this logos. That is, in this context, he is using logos for speaking. 
that was no part in this utterance. Thou, he saw the gift of utterance and he wanted to buy it with money. And Peter told him, go and perish with your money. The utterance of the spirit is not purchased with money. Therefore, your money disqualifies you from being a part of this utterance. You have no part in this utterance. You have no part in this lot. In other words, that Simon saw, what Simon saw was utterance. He saw utterances. He had utterances come out of people's mouths. And he said, this is supernatural. And this is similar to Acts 2.4. They began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. 